Hey, hey, hey! Welcome back. Okay, in this lesson, I'm going to answer a couple of questions you might have about tile sets. Uh, one problem that students have had historically is that they, they create a map that looks good, but they can't walk on it like they anticipated. So I just want to show you the database regarding tile sets. So for example, I've had students in the past that would do something like uh, this brick here, and they decide, okay, that's going to be their ground. So they've got brick flooring, uh, then they go ahead and create some sort of castle, whatever that castle happens to be. Again, do that on the second layer. So uh, here's here's our castle. <clears throat> okay, you can create the other side of it if you like. Uh, so a variety of things you can do. Right, and put a roof on your castle, whatever it happens to be. <clears throat> and you got to be a little bit creative with how you uh, set up these tile sets. And if you want a window on your castle, you'll have to add that in the third layer. So uh, there's there's my castle with a window. Um, now if I go and play this game, let me just first of all, in my event layer, just make my starting point in the middle. And students often say, hey, Mr. Martins, uh, why can't I move on my particular map? So let me just kind of explain that to you here. So uh, you'll see my character is trapped. Okay, so you get to a map and you get completely trapped. Now the reason for that is uh, in the database, so the database is right here. In the database, it has all the data about everything in the game. Now the nice thing is you can actually edit that. So I can go into the tile set for this map. So this uh, map here is called Castle. So if I go into my database and I go into Tile Sets, so right here, and I go to Castle, which is my number 25, if I see all the X's and O's, uh, X's are tiles that I cannot walk on by default. So RPG in the database was interpreting these as being walls. It's nice that you have X's and O's because you can't walk onto a water fountain or you can't walk onto a window or walls or whatever happens to be or the bottom of a statue, etc. Uh, but you can change that if you click on the X's and convert them to O's. So I think this is the one that I use, but I'll just do more just in case. But convert those to O's. Those should be walking tiles now. So if I apply that and I go ahead and play my game, I can now walk. Okay. The second question that I have students ask me is, Mr. Martins, there's no doors on my tile set. So you'll see here from my castle, there's absolutely no tile that looks like a door. So <clears throat> what you can do here is a workaround is adding a door from the graphics as an event. Uh, so if I go here and I go to new event, under graphic, most of the characters are sprites. Okay, they're actual playing or non-playing characters. But if you go down, there are some inanimate objects, like chests, a variety of things, uh, that you can just have stationary. And some of them are doors. So you can choose whatever you'd like to. So there's a door. You don't have to program anything. But now if I actually play test my game, it looks pretty dorky here. But if I go ahead and play test my game, I will have an actual door on my castle. So that's kind of a workaround with tile sets that don't have doors. Uh, and my final thing to show you as far as tile sets go is sometimes uh, you have to investigate a little bit more deeply in a, in a tile set. So let me just show you, for example, uh, if I, I think one of them here was Farm Village Inn, for example, you'll see that there's a staircase here. So some students, again, you might want to put down a floor. And I've had students where they want to come up from the staircase. So they they put in stairs, they put it in the second layer, and they assume that they are going to come up from the staircase. Okay, seems normal. Okay, I'm going to come up from a staircase. I don't know where I'm coming from, but maybe some sort of door, whatever it happens to be. But when they play test their game, so they come into the staircase, <clears throat> they play test their game, and they can walk on the staircase, but they can't get off of it. So I'm stuck. I can't move upwards. Now, it's a little bit. Uh, you have to get a little bit more uh, into the inner workings of the database tile set, but if I go to the database tile set for that particular one, which was, I think, Forest Town Inn, I believe. Uh, so right here is that tile. So it suggests that the top of the stairs are a walking tile. But uh, if you click on the four direction passage, so it'll let you walk in a variety of directions, but if I click on four direction passage, you can see the dot that's here. So that dot right there uh, means that I cannot move upwards off of the staircase because they're interpreting it as coming down 
from stairs. So if you wanted to go up, you have to click on this dot. Again, you might want to have used the ladder anyways, but if you click on that dot, you'll now, if you go ahead and play your game, be able to move upwards on that particular staircase. Okay, so those are all the inner workings of the tile sets, um, and that's the way that it works. Although right now it's still not letting me move upwards, so maybe I've got the wrong tile set. Let's just find out here. So this is Farm Village Inn, and I'm just going to look at it again. Oh, I was in Forest Town Inn, so Farm Village Inn. So you can see you got to be careful about which one you're in. So Farm Village Inn, which is slightly different. Uh, this guy right here, look at the four direction. It has an up arrow. So I should theoretically whoops, be able to walk up that staircase. And there we go. Okay, uh, that's it for that lesson.